So this is an important subject, coping with loss. Um, losses have a tendency to make us extremely depressed and despondent at chess. Uh, there were people who used to get things called Fisher sickness. I think the term was coined, you know, when he was beating people like Ben Larson and timing off like six to nothing in candidates matches and uh, things that hadn't happened in the grandmaster world before people would like take time off because they were getting physically ill from losing. And I personally um, have certain ways of dealing with losses. Um, I just lost a game today to somebody who was only rated 2260, and I, I wasn't really happy about it. Um, I played an opening that is very, very rarely played, and very few people know it. And uh, the, the person played the perfect stockfish refutation of the opening, and when we analyzed it later in an engine, they made one minor mistake the entire game, no blunders, you know, no inaccuracies. Um, so, whoever you were, German opponent online, um, congratulations, you really knew what you were doing. Uh, I have my suspicions, but I'm, I'm not going to, like, wave a red flag at the world. Um, you have a... There are people who make it their professions to do this sort of thing. So, obviously, I'm not happy about losing. I went on and beat somebody else. Um, rather soundly. So um, I have ways of getting over my losses. Um, if well, You've seen the movie In Search of Bobby Fischer. His coach um, had an unusual way of trying to prepare his student for a loss and told his mother, um, Josh Waitzkin's mother, that it was cruel not to prepare them. Uh, and what's funny about that is that the mother took it really seriously and, you know, tried to turn chess into more of a hobby for her son and uh, didn't want to ever see the Grandmaster teacher again. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a reaction that's uh, common among chess and chess parents. Um, if you, you have to ask, is, is it cruel not to prepare somebody for a loss? And what do you do with them? your students? Well, when I was a tournament player and I was coming up in the world, uh, there was an individual that came in from another state who drove all the way, you know, a couple hundred miles in from another state to play in our tournament. And he was the highest rated player in his state. And he was rated higher than I was. But, you know, there are pockets of ratings. I, I played in a big city pretty much where the ratings were not inflated in any way. And I beat him in the first round of a tournament, and he was an adult. I, I, he was like in his late 20s. And he exploded in anger near the end of the game. And, it was one of those games where it was the last one in a round and everybody was huddled around watching and he actually broke down and cried after I beat him and left, withdrew the, from the tournament, disappeared and went back <laughs> to his state. Uh, and, uh, you know, there was a lot of smirking and a lot of things going on in that game, but we see little kids throw fits when they lose in tournaments these days. I mean, absolutely stomping wild fits and their parents can barely control them. Um, I myself, I'm a coach, uh, one, one of my students is a girl, and uh, the incidences where people lose to girls, where guys, men, old men, lose to girls, they hate it, and um, it's uh, completely debilitating for them from what I can tell. You should hear the excuses. I mean, there's, there's no excuse in chess. Uh, I mean, there are people who run out of the tournament room, you know, just resigning prematurely so to avoid shame, apparently. Um, so, one should never forget that chess is a very serious game, and people take it very seriously, and people who are rated 1300 take it very seriously. This is their hobby, too. They are capable of doing very well and making very good moves. Um, the guy who I played today from Germany, he might have just strung together a whole lot of really perfect moves, and if that was true, congratulations, you know. He really did a, a beautiful job and played a great game, and in the end I got into time trouble, and it was a very difficult situation to get out of. I lost, you know, and he won. And, you know, he may not have the highest rating on earth, but, you know, the fact is that he played great. And I remember being a, a, a class player and running into lower-rated players who played perfect games, you know. they Depending on the position, they could play, and there was no question that they weren't using a machine. In those days, there were no machines. So... It, uh, these things happen, and uh, coping with loss is something that everyone's going to have to do because everyone's going to lose. 
Uh, even the great world champions lose, and they really don't like it. Um, so losses are going to happen. We're going to have bad days. The key is, how do we deal with them? Do we ever get used to it? If you start getting used to just having a bad day, and I've heard lectures and people giving my students lectures, and oh, everybody has a bad day, you're just going to have a bad day, and there's a bad tournament, and bad tournaments happen, and I've had so many and just don't get upset about it. Those players are going to be at a certain level forever because they lack the hatred of losing that is required to advance. Now, somebody's going to really jump on this with me and say, well, what do you mean hatred of losing? That sounds like you're some sort of psychopath, you know, who has to win. The fact is that hatred for losing, at least in my mind, is an essential part of winning. If you don't hate losing, if you're one of these people who says, jolly, good, wonderful game, shakes somebody hand and shakes somebody's hands and moves on to the next one, jolly, wonderful, you know, then, you know, you don't have the passion for the game that other people have where they enjoy winning. Maybe they enjoy winning just as much as they enjoy losing. I don't know. This is the kind of personality that I, I, I'm unfamiliar with. However, it's not important to hate your opponent. And we have to be careful not to do that. Chess is a battle of ideas. So you want to depersonalize the game from the person. You know, his ideas, their ideas were better than your ideas. You know, the fact is that there are no excuses in chess. You lost because they were smarter than you were. You lost because there wasn't sun in your eyes. You didn't miss, you know, the, the fly ball because, you know, you were blinded by something. Or there, there are no external excuses. You know, somebody could be chewing gum. They could be picking their nose. You know, there's a coughing in your face. There are no excuses. Everyone starts with an equal number of pieces. And the fact is that... A lost game is a treasure of opportunity because specifically what happened during that game has identified some key weaknesses and some places that you absolutely are able to improve. It, it is a diagnostic tool. In other words, there are some things that you did poorly that you can improve upon tremendously. Especially useful are the games where you can't figure out why you went wrong or where you went wrong. In those games, the, you know, if there's one obvious blunder, the key is, well, you've lost your concentration, let's not blunder anymore. Let's anticipate the possibility for the blindness and the type of position that you had, and the type of pattern that you couldn't see. Those are really easy opportunities to take advantage of. The more strategic long-term ones were ones where, gee, we, we really didn't trade down our pieces fast enough because they had a bind in a position that, you know, we thought we could do more with than was we were capable of doing. You know, the, the very subtle um, positional situations that required better judgment. Those are the games that are going to make you much better. You know, loss is a treasure of opportunity to learn about those things. And so, finally, the real danger in losing is that you're going to lose a whole lot of times in a row. Everyone's going to lose, and what you don't want to do is get into the syndrome where you're having your brain speed out by a Fisher-like, you know, individual or by a series of unfortunate incidents in a tournament because you're upset, because you got very upset over something that happened, you know, where the, you're, you're a, the, your inner child is crying and whining, or you're too upset to play. You're, I had a martial arts teacher who used to scream in our faces purposely. He'd get right into our faces and scream to teach us how to relax. Because he claimed, and this was true, and we could all do this in a tournament, one of the things you do is you scream at your opponent during, you know, um, you know execution of moves, and that has a unnerving effect on them and tends to take the wind out of their sails in a big way. But if you can get over that and you can relax, you're able to respond and deal with what they're doing beautifully. So you don't want to get upset when you, you get really upset over these things and you're not able to look at it dispassionately, the potential exists for you to repeat the folly in another form and have another loss, and possibly a string of losses. So what you'd rather not do is get upset. And the way to not get upset is to depersonalize the game. Don't get upset at the people. Get upset specifically at what it was that you did that you can now use as a weapon 
something that you learned. They did something. They got you into time trouble. They ran you down on, on one side of the board and pulled a pawn lever in such a way that you didn't see. They sacked an exchange. They came up with the superior ratio of a rook and two pawns to two minor pieces. They came up with, they came up with, they came up People are teaching you how to beat them back. Use what that last person just did. Look for it in your upcoming game. There's a chance it'll be there. Even if it didn't, it's a weapon that you have to keep current now as part of your arsenal. So you can actually lose the, use the loss as a great tool to dispassionately go after the next person and use as a weapon. And just remember, we're all idiots in the eyes of stockfish. You know, there are times that I play games that I'm sure that it's absolutely perfect and that I, I've created an artistic masterpiece that I'm proud of and I'm happy with and I might even put it on the web and show people. And then I put it in Stockfish and find out that I was wrong and really wrong. And it's, I've never played a, a game in Stockfish that came out like absolutely perfectly. Stockfish always finds some inaccuracy or something that I could have done a little better. And that's just the nature of chess is that we're all idiots to a greater power of some sort and right now that power are strong engines so even the world champions and their brilliancies are inaccurate compared to what <laughs> these engines do so um, it's a very humbling experience looking at just how poorly we play in comparison to engines so if this is a battle of ideas played over a period of time against other human beings and the ideas that they used were better than yours, and now you can use their ideas back against somebody else and them in the future. And that's the way that I would handle losses.